Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. This is the overview where I go over how I retouch the particular image and we'll start from the beginning in um, whatever raw processing software I'm using. In this case, I'm using Capture One and we'll go all the way to the end um, in Photoshop. So today's image is this image of this beautiful model shot by a photographer, Amanda Akokia in the UK, in London right now. And she put out this image for a retouching competition. I was just retouching this image or I put this image up or I retouched the image and put it up on my Instagram so that I could show support for what she's doing because she's giving out money to the winners because of the whole um, issue right now and she feels like a lot of creatives are making money right now so it's just like a way of helping creatives so you guys should definitely go follow her and show her some support so she put out this image and um, i retouched it and this image took a long time to retouch uh, about four hours to retouch this image to be specific now i'm going to go over why it took me that long to retouch this image because it just looks like a really simple image so without further ado let's get straight into this now this is capture one and capture one is my um, raw processing software of um, choice if you decide to use lightroom that's fine lightroom is amazing if you want to use the new luminar 4 then that's fine that's amazing too it just depends on what you're comfortable with and for me i am very very comfortable with capture one so this is the raw image now the funny thing is she actually put a tiff file because she couldn't find that actual raw image but it's fine we used the tiff file just like that now, straight out of the camera, you can see there isn't a lot of contrast. The uh, image looks really nice, but um, just, uh, just, it's just not contrasty. So the first thing I did was I, now this is my Capture One edit. The first thing I did was that I added some contrast to the image and we're going to come to this part of Capture One and I'll show you exactly what I did. So I reduced my highlights, increased my shadows a little bit because there were some places like around the head that just became too dark and then I left my whites the way it is, then reduced my blacks to add some more contrast. Now talking about contrast, when I um, work with my levels, I just pull in my whites and I pull in my black. So if you know about your histogram, your whites are on your right and your blacks are on your left. So by the time you like pull both in, it just adds a lot of contrast to your image. And after that, I came to my Luma curve and I just pulled the shadows down a little bit just to add um, some more contrast to the image. So if I hold option and I click this, you can see the before and the after. So before, after, before adding any contrast to this, after, then look at the before and the after of the high dynamic range. So before, after, before, after, and let's say the before and after of my levels, before, after, you can see like the levels is what's doing the most because it looks really flat without the levels and after and um okay yes i also worked on my white balance because i made the image a tad bit warmer and um when i made it warmer it just had like a lot of magenta in it so i had to pull my tint back towards my green so let's see the before and after of that before after as you guys can see a little bit more magenta now we have like some greens in the skin and it just looks a lot warmer and um, true to life. Unlike here where it just looked pale straight out of camera, which is typically how images look out of camera, maybe um, because of a lot of light or whatever. So yeah, so now this is our image in Capture One, our fin finished processed image. <laughs> what am I saying? This is the image in Capture One. This is the raw image now that I've processed it in Capture One. And we're going to go to Photoshop now and see how we made this image look like this. So let's get straight into Photoshop. So guys, now we're in Photoshop and you can see a lot of, um, <laughs> would I say layers here? Yeah? And um, we're going to just start from the beginning. So let's just turn everything off. And we are just going to start from the beginning. I know there's a way to turn everything off once, but <laughs> let's just start from the beginning. So the first thing I did, and I already made a tutorial about this, I think that was the last video I just put out, was remove the stray hair around her face. Now there's a good technique to do that where you follow, you know, each hair strand till the end. So it just doesn't look like the hair is stopping abruptly. Um, definitely check that video out. I'll link it in the description and also put a card up here on the right. So now that's the first thing we did. We removed the stray hair. And after that, I did a basic frequency separation. Um, I, ran, I ran my basic frequency separation action and um, you guys can 
just go download that for free the reason why i did that was to remove the blemishes so i'm just going to zoom in so i can show you guys so like i said the first thing i did i removed the stray hair from her face the next thing i removed the blemishes using frequency separation all you have to do is create a frequency separation or create frequency separation layers put everything in a group then use your clone stamp tool on the high frequency layer to remove the blemishes and that's all i did then i merged everything into one layer because i just don't need the whole frequency separation um, layers the major reason why i did that was just to remove the blemishes from her face and after doing that the next thing that i do is micro dodge and burn so with micro dodge and burn the way i go about it is by creating an invert check layer if you want to create an invert check layer you just use your gradient map and your levels and you are good that's how you create your invert check layer so um i just do my micro dodge and burn i have a video or a few videos on how to use micro dodge and burn to retouch or macro dodge and burn i don't know anyone they call it um you guys should definitely go check out those videos so yeah so you just create your micro dodge and burn layers um you can find them in my retouching essentials pack or you can just create it yourself there are a bunch of curve adjustment layers so now that i have finished doing my dodge and burn next thing that i did was um put everything together in one image so Control command shift sorry command option shift and e to create a stamp visible layer and that is control um alternate shift and e on pc yes so um i created a stamp visible layer and i ran my frequency separation again the advanced frequency separation action by the way i have that out for free and uh, you can go get that and what i did with that was just use my mixer brush to to smoothen out um her face now with dodge and burn sometimes you just can't get the image to look as smooth as possible but the good thing about dodge and burn is you're not messing around with colors you're messing around with the um how light and how dark the image is so that's how you fix all the patches right and with an image like this it always seems like there isn't so much to do but once you start working you realize that there is a lot to do right now after dodge and burn there are still a few patches that you can't completely eliminate with dodge and burn in such a short period of time you probably have to dodge and burn for hours to get everything to look really really smooth and that's where frequency separation comes in so for frequency separation what i do is use my mixer brush tool which is this tool right here um let me show you guys the settings i use so these are the settings up here i just brush over the low layer so i just brush over the low layer to just you know even out the whole skin tones and make everything look even and you know make everything look really good and that's what i did with my new frequency separation layer like i said i have videos that i have done over the past on all these things you guys should definitely go check it out i'll link as many as i can in description below so after that i had to fix the lips now the lips or lips for me are kind of like hard to fix <laughs> you have to make them look natural at the same time you just cannot mess um you just cannot mess up so the way i go about fixing lips is by using the pen tool i think i will create a tutorial later on how i fix lips but personally i am still working on perfecting that part of retouching because for the longest time i ran away from fixing lips because it just was really hard and now i am just getting back to making that happen so what i did was i used my pen tool to just draw a shape around the lip so that's literally what i did so I just use my pen tool to draw a shape around the lip something like this this is how it goes then um it's a path and from a path we'll create a selection and now inside that selection so let me just remove this that i did inside a selection which is right here um from here i'll create a selection make selection click ok now inside that selection what i'll do is that i'll now use my clone stamp tool make sure i am going to sample all layers and just paint over the lips to just cover it up remember let me just remove the selection remember the lipstick stopped halfway so what i just did was i used my clone stamp tool to just fill it up now the reason why we're creating a selection is so we do not go above or outside our selection we'll just 
create a selection that looks like her lips and will work within that selection. Now, so I did that with this and I filled it up. And the next thing I did was that I just removed a lot of like um, blemishes and other things inside with my um, clone stamp tool. Just made sure that it was cleaner. And then I added a lip color. So what I did was I just sampled a part. I picked my brush tool. So right here, pick my brush tool, hold option or alternate to sample the color there and paint over the lips. And after painting over the lips, I changed my blend mode to saturation and that just, you know, made the color match with the lip color that is below. And that is how I fixed the lips. And I spent so much time doing this and it's not something I can just do again in this tutorial. And like I said, over time, I will create a better lip tutorial, but this, was this and dodge and burn just made it like really hard for me to finish this image in a short period of time and it took me like i said about four hours to dodge and burn fix the lips because you know i just kept going back and forth with the lips until i got it to look as good and as natural as possible now after that another thing i did was micro dodge and burn again on the lips now i just realized that it didn't look as smooth as i wanted it to look and she had these dark um patches up here on top of her lips so i used micro dodge and burn to fix all that and smoothing it out and after that i'm just going to zoom out now so you guys can see this maybe just zoom back in after that next thing i did was global dodge and burn now global dodge and burn is what just makes your image pop you remember micro or macro dodge and burn is how you retouch and even out the whole skin with global dodge and burn you just dodge the um, highlights and burn the shadows and that way your image is going to stand out and look like lights touching your subject in the right places okay great now after fixing that the next thing i did was her eyes i added some yellow to her eyes like the um what do you call it the eyeshadow i think that's it so i think that's the eyeshadow so yeah so her eyeshadows i just um used my brush tool again so i'm just going back to my could go back to my brush tool hold option or alternate pick a color around her eyes and just paint over and i got it into her eyes a little bit and that's why i created um a mask i created a layer mask so i could just use it to hide you know that part so remember with your layer mask black hides and white reveals so if you draw something that is showing too much you can just create a layer mask and just paint it out of the places that you don't want it to show so after adding some yellows as you guys can see to that just to make the eyeshadow look brighter i added some pink under her eyes the same technique just to make the pink under her eyes pop right and after that i ran my action from my um retouching essentials pack which is even skin tones as you guys can see it just does a really subtle job so right now i'm going to take this all the way to 100 you can see evens out the whole skin tones um but this is too much so i used 20 so i'm just going to go back to somewhere around here 21 so the whole idea is that it evens out the the skin tones and everything just looks milky and silky right and after that i created a new levels adjustment layer to add contrast again remember i did this in capture one so all i did here was just pulling my whites and pulling my blacks to add some contrast to my image then i ran my eyes and teeth whitening action you guys already know what it is i have it out for free go download it then rich tones from my retouching essentials pack now what this does is it just makes the whole image look richer so this is the before and this is the after before and after if you want this you definitely have to get my retouching essentials pack i'm sorry <laughs> but i ran rich tones for my retouching essentials pack and then i put a color lot on the image from one of my lots now i made sure that the opacity was like really low because i wanted the image to look as natural as possible so if i took it up you guys can see it kind of like desaturates the image even though i love the look i just wanted it to look as natural as possible so i left it somewhere around 30. so if you guys want my skin tone lots like i said you guys can go purchase it and support this channel i'll put a link in the description below and after that the next thing i did was i took this particular image into lumina 4 and i did my um 
um what do you call it <laughs> i think it's right here yes i did my liquify illumina 4 so yes the way illumina 4 just um fixes the image for you and i also did a little bit of my sharpening in illumina 4 now i'm not going to show that right now because it's just going to take um too much time but these are things that you can do in in photoshop and you don't have to go to illumina 4 you can use if you already have my actions um pack you can just use the smart sharpen to sharpen our eyes and use liquify to just you know um make the face look a little slimmer because they say the camera always makes you look uh, a bit fatter it depends on the lens though <laughs> but yeah and um that's about it that is everything i did and um I think I added a little bit of color in Lumina 4 too. So there is a way you can tone skin tones in Lumina 4. That is a tutorial that I am going to do another day to show you how you can just mess around with skin tones in Lumina 4. But if you have my Retouching Essentials pack or you've already watched my videos on how to balance skin tones, you can use the, um, what would I call it? The selective color tool in Photoshop to do that. It is pretty easy. All you have to do is come to your reds and you can move your, your image towards the science as you guys can see or you can move your skin tones towards reds i already have a video on how to retouch or color grade your images using um, the selective color adjustment layer so definitely check that out too there's so much content on this channel that if you haven't watched you are definitely missing out so go watch those videos so yeah it took me such a long time and it's crazy how i'm trying to like run through everything in as I don't know as little time as possible so that's about it that is how i got this image from this to this let me zoom in and show you guys again the before and the after that's how i got this image from this right here to this and it's crazy how it does not seem like there's a huge jump and i know that's what retouching is supposed to be but like i said it took me almost four hours to get this image to where it is um the last thing I've, i haven't showed you guys is here right here at the end i used my um smudge tool to fix her nails right here i used my smudge tool to fix her nails and i also went into liquify because after fixing it it just looked weird to just you know adjust her hands and make it look natural so that was the last thing i did here remember you have to pay attention to detail and that's about it that is how we got this image to look super nice and her skin to look super silky and you guys can try this at home with your images and let me know how it goes anyways thank you so much for watching this video just so you guys know i really appreciate the support i appreciate the comments you guys definitely comment below let me know what you think um give this video a thumbs up it just lets youtube know that i am creating really good content and that way youtube will show it to other people Anyways, thank you so much. I can't wait for the lockdown to be over. I hope you guys are safe so I can bring you guys a lot more tutorials and a lot more lighting tutorials and behind the scenes of me shooting. I have missed doing all that. Can't wait to like hook you up with new videos. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Have an amazing day. Peace.